Walken or Walson, I'm not really sure how you're meant to say it, is a nice new ARPG that just came out of early access. Let's take a look at its necromancy and see if it's any good. In Walken you have a few abilities that provide you with undead minions. Walken uses a classless system, so you have to be lucky enough to find the necromancy abilities from enemies or purchase them from vendors. It took me quite a while to get my hands on them, so I had to make use of mundane weapons for my first several hours of gameplay. The minions start out very weak. Mine were so weak at first that I thought they were timed to expire after 5 seconds, but fortunately this wasn't the case, and the minions are indeed permanent. I found it vital to make sure I got all the passive minion perks to beef them up as much as possible. After doing this, they're quite strong. In the passive perk tree you need to get down to this corner and get all the minion stuff. If you don't do this, I think you'll be very disappointed in the minions. The most important ones are of course the ones in this node here, that cause you to lose a percentage of your hit points and shield, but increase the health of your minions. I went with a straight line through the warrior passive perks to get to the minion perks, and in the end this was beneficial. A lot of these warrior perks add extra health and stuff, which helps to offset the hit you take from making your minions viable. There's five abilities that can be considered necromancy abilities. The first of these is Feeding Swarm. It lets you summon zombie warriors to your side. At first you can only have two of these and they're quite weak, but as you fight the ability levels up and the zombies get better and better. As the skill levels up you get points which you can spend to make the zombies different or improve them. For example, you can choose to make the zombies more plentiful, which lets you get three of them. Or you can do the opposite, and restrict yourself to one very strong zombie. You can also choose to change the damage type of the zombies. Default damage type is physical, but it can become toxic, fire, or aether. Changing the damage type is reflected by the color of the swords. Fire gets a red sword, while aether gets a purple sword, and toxic gets a green sword. Hunting Swarm lets you summon zombie archers. Like the warriors, these start out super weak, but get better with time. Just like the warriors, you can customize these archers and tailor them to suit your needs. Their damage can be changed to toxic, frost, or shadow. The color of their bows changes to reflect the chosen damage type. Blue for frost, dark blue for shadow, and green for toxic. You can also choose to restrict their number to increase their damage, or expand their number to get three of them. In addition to these more dramatic changes, you can also choose to change smaller things, like increase the health of the minions, or increase their damage output, or their speed. Parasite is a damage over time spell that raises the enemy under your control if it dies while you're channeling it. The amount of parasites you can have seems to be dependent on the strength of the hosts you're choosing. You can parasite many weaker enemies and have a swarm of them following you, or you can choose to parasite one very strong enemy. Of all the minion spells, this is the one I chose not to make use of. It's a cool spell, but I found myself becoming too much of a sitting duck while using it, forced to stand still channeling it until the enemy died. And all for quite a weak minion. Once leveled up it probably becomes good, but I chose not to use it, so I can't tell you much more about it. One of the nicest minion abilities is Livor Mortis. It lets you summon a large and putrid flesh golem. Of all the minions, this guy is the least squishy. He seems to be a lot tankier than you'd expect, even for a tank minion. I found him surviving things that I was sure he'd have died from, so I'm quite impressed with this minion. Just like all the other skills, as it levels up you can change it in various ways. In addition to all the standard stuff like putting a point in to make it stronger or faster, etc, you can also choose to radically change it into a different kind of minion. To sacrifice a lot of hit points on the golem, or change its damage type to shadow, you can choose to change it into a shadowy melee warrior. The warrior cannot taunt enemies to attack it like the golem can, but it has a leaping attack and increased damage. You can also turn it into a powerful mage that has ranged lightning attacks and the ability to create a protective dome around it. Turning it into a mage weakens its hit points the most, but I haven't had issues with it being too squishy and dying. Even as a mage, it's still quite a tanky and strong minion, especially compared to the zombies which are much more prone to getting killed. You can also put points into this minion to make it share a portion of all damage dealt to you. 
So overall, it's just a really nice minion to have, and certainly the most useful one. The last necromancy skill is called Plague Burst. It's like an aura of poison you can surround yourself with. It can be upgraded in many ways to make it more potent, but the most interesting upgrade it can have is one that causes it to summon in extra minions. It's a nice bit of extra DPS with even more minions in your swarm. The minion mechanics in Walken are good, but not fantastic. I'm scoring it a 7.8 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. The main areas where it falls down are in the usefulness of the minions, the amount of minions, and to a certain extent the squishiness of the caster. In my experience, until I was able to get to a higher level and flesh out the passive perks that strengthen the minions up a lot, the minions felt like cardboard cutouts that the enemy would just hit once or twice and then they fell over. With the exception of the golem, I was carrying the minions a lot. On the plus side, once those minion skills leveled up a bit, and the necessary passive perks are purchased, the minions do begin to pull their weight and become useful. Because of how Walken's magic system works, you won't ever have the type of gameplay where you can just sit back and let all your minions do the work for you. There are two kinds of mana in the game, a purple willpower bar and a yellow rage bar. Casting spells consumes the purple and produces rage, or using other abilities like melee attacks and things consumes the rage and generates more willpower. In my opinion this is quite a nice system because it forces you to be an active participant in the battles. The standard minion mancer minion dance where you run around in circles while your minions do all the work for you isn't really feasible in this game, especially not in boss fights. If you aren't out there swinging your axe around or whatever, you won't be spending the rage and you won't have any mana generating for replacing your dead minions with. The system I went with was Plague Burst, Feeding Swarm, Hunting Swarm, and Lever Mortis bound to the keys, and Dash and Whirlwind Attack bound to the mouse buttons. So I cast all my minions and Plague Burst, and then to spend all the rage and get my mana back, I'd spin around doing Whirlwinds. The system worked pretty well for me. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped you determine whether Walken will deliver you a satisfying minion experience or not. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.